Hello, welcome to SVJ TV's news for Wednesday, December 14th, 2022. I'm Triska Campbell with the details. Minister of Finance Camilla Gonzalez has given the commitment that the government will seek in the new year to arrive at decisions that will result in a long-term sustainability of the country's pension system for the growing number of retired civil servants. During his presentation of the estimates of the F revenue and expenditure for the fiscal year 2023 in Parliament yesterday, Minister Gonsalf said pension reform will be high on the government's agenda in 2023, noting that the executive director of the National Insurance Services, the NIS, has already indicated that the, the unsustainability of the current public pension system without reform and that this is a clear indication that they have to act now. Minister Gonzalez pointed out in 2023 the amount uh, provided uh, for to pay pension to retired civil servants and government counterparts contributions to the NIS for civil servants currently employed is about 75.4 million EC dollars. Pension continues to be one of the more significant items in the recurrent expenditure in 2023. The burden obviously increases um, and the future burden on government pension plan will be substantial as the government is the largest employer in the country and pension promises in the public sector um, are relatively generous and future payments have to be made directly from government's revenue, pay as you go. This makes the current public sector system unsustainable in the medium to long term, as it is non-contributory. Pension reform conversations have begun in earnest. This is something that was discussed in prior budget addresses um, and we were derailed over the last two years by challenges that we faced on the ground uh, of both the pandemic and the volcanic eruptions and it was not, um, we believed, um, a, a, an opportune time to have those discussions as we were dealing with other challenges at the time. But the, as was promised in the last year's budget address, that the pension discussions would begin in the year 2022, and they have been. Um, the head of the NIS, uh, Mr. Stuart Haynes, has been meeting with individual labor unions. He's met with labor unions collectively, has been hosting a number of radio programs and press conferences and the like, and those discussions will intensify as we head towards um, a consensus in 2023. In his response to the presentation of the estimates for the 2023 fiscal package, leader of the opposition, Dr. Godwin Friday, expressed concern about the country's debt, which currently stands at just over $2 billion or $4.1 over the 2022. Uh, Dr. Friday told Parliament that not only is the overall death worrying, uh, but also the debt servicing ratio, which last year went up to 41%. And uh, while it is now showing a slight increase of about 37%, it is still too high. Dr. Friday said, based on what was presented in the estimates, the government has to come up with about $282.8 million to pay the debt, which he said accounts for about 37 cents for every dollar earned in current revenue. It's no wonder that the IMF in last year said that a characterized this debt situation as high risk of overall debt distress. It's acknowledged in the budget that there's a high risk of distress, but they say it's sustainable. And I notice that the government has now taken on board the cautions that Mr. Eustace had made so many times in his honorable blows as to how you manage government finances so that you make it sustainable going forward. And this is not rocket science, you know, and it's not something that's foreign or alien to us here in St. Vincent. This was done for 17 years under the NDP government. 
You had a surplus generated of over 5% per annum, which was used to go towards counterpart funding for various projects. And at the same time, an average annual growth of over 4.2%, which exceeds what we have in this present government. So you had, on the same side, you had prudent financial management in that you had a surplus being generated, a current surplus, while at the same time, you had increased growth. That's not magic. That is prudent, wise, sensible government. And at the same time, poverty was decreasing in the country overall. People, lives are improving. The opposition leader said the ECCB and other financial institutions around the world said 60% of the GDP is something to aim for. However, in Asfiji's case, uh, the debt in 2022 was 98%, which was about the size of the economy. And though there is a slight decrease, it is still above the recommended percentage. And this is a heavy burden to carry. Human not one of them spoke about the fact that come January, everybody in this country gets a salary increase because of this budget. And that taxes go down because of this budget. And that we are realigning and reorganizing uh, TVET and tertiary education in this budget. That, that we're engaging in what the honorable, the honorable leader of the opposition called a Marshall Plan for Roads. I like that formulation. That we're engaging in a Marshall Plan for Roads. That we have invested heavily in agriculture and fisheries and fleet expansion, and that we are reorganizing and rationalizing and, and redeveloping uh, Kingstown. And I hope to have the opportunity to engage the member for Central Kingstown on the issue of uh, the vendors, because it's an important discussion that we need to have, and I hope we can have it in the appropriation bill. Madam Speaker, the challenge is implementation. The challenge is not uh, resources so much as it, is, as it is capacity, human capacity in the government uh, to, to do the procurement and to comply with all of these international uh, lenders, capacity among contractors. We're talking, the Honorable Member for the Honorable Minister of Works was talking, the Honorable Prime Minister was talking about how we're behind time with girls high school and they may have to stay there longer. It's not for want of money, it's not for want of counterpart financing. It's because the contractor was stretched so thin, doing grammar school, doing high school, doing another school, that the contractor couldn't finish the work in the originally projected time. And of course, there is labor capacity, Madam Speaker. There are hundreds of people working at Bookament, locals. There are people working at the Holiday Inn Express. There are people working at, um, what do you say? There are people working at con con um, the, the building the schools. Uh, building the port, uh, working at rainforest seafood. At some point, we're going to run into some constraints there, Madam Speaker. During his wrap-up of the debates on the budget estimates 2023 fiscal package, Minister of Finance Camilla Gansav said while all of the project, all of the projections are subject to multi-downsized risk, there are a number of things to be proud of in the 2023 budget. After a lengthy debate in the estimates of the revenue and expenditure for the fiscal year 2023, amounting to $1.4 billion, uh, were approved by Parliament. Members are expected to return to the House on Monday, January 9, 2023, for the presentation of the national budget from 3 p.m. St. Vincent and the Grenadines' Coast Guard Service and this country's Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade have been applauded by the United States authorities following what has been described as a heroic rescue of three U.S. citizens after their vessel sank in Asfiji waters on November 19, 2022. According to a release from the Agency for Public Information, on that date, a private U.S. vessel sailing four miles from the shore in St. Vincent and the, in the Grenadines began taking on water and issued a mayday distress call. The vessel eventually sank and three Americans lost all their possessions. In a letter dated December 12, 2022, addressed to the Prime Minister, Dr. Ralph Gensalves, Ambassador at the Embassy of the United States, uh, Bridgetown, Barbados, Her Excellency Linda Atalegua Talda, extended her personal gratitude and that of the American people 
for the bravery and skill shown by the men and women of St. Vincent and the Grenadines Coast Guard services during the rescue operation. The API says the ambassador's letter noted that after the three Americans were rescued at sea, they were given prompt attention, comfortable accommodation, and assistance in contacting the visiting U.S. consular office to replace their missing travel documents. The ambassador in her letter to Prime Minister Gonsalves further noted that on November 19th, the authorities of the St. Vincent and the Grenadines, uh, both civilian and uniformed, went far beyond this request. Their courage, compassion and dedication to duty save the lives of their citizens, which merit lasting gratitude. On a, no, on a not so positive note, concerns were expressed in Parliament on Tuesday about the upsurge in breakings on yachts docking in SVG's waters. During a question and answer segment, opposition leader and MP for the Northern Grenadines, Dr. Godwin Friday, pointed out that there has been a recent spike in yacht break-ins at Admiralty Bay in Beckway and other harbors and bays throughout the country, resulting in bad publicity for the island as a destination among yacht visitors. The opposition leader asked the minister with responsibility for national security, the Prime Minister, Dr. Alf Gonsalves, what measures will be taken to improve security for yacht visitors at the various harbors and bays. In his response, PM Gonsalves acknowledged an upsurge in breakings, which he said comes after SVG was recognized as the safest destination in the Caribbean in respect to yachting. The Prime Minister noted that the issue requires not only work by the state agencies, but also the involvement of the community. The Honourable Member for the Southern Grenadines will remember not too long ago, there were two persons, who, two young men, who had been very much involved in break-ins, when I say a few years ago, and the people in the community actually went and knew them, held them, and took them to the police. In fact, I think in one case the police had to offer them some protection because the people were very irate that they were, in a sense, uh, cutting down the breadfruit tree, metaphorically. And I think it's very important for us to have the, the involvement of the community and for them to report accordingly. The Prime Minister says the police and Coast Guard have increased patrols on land and sea, and in the case of Beckway, they have not only increased surveillance, but also strengthened the base for the Coast Guard officers, along with the office other measures elsewhere. Deputy Director of Grenadines Affairs has vacated his particular office to the Coast Guard, and he's been housed elsewhere so that we could better accommodate the base in Beckway for the Coast Guard officers. And at persons would know too that at the area, the, 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 the point where persons, you normally meet people gathered at close to the Young Island docks, and, and in that area you have a lot of yachts. Um, we are having enhanced patrols there. I'm giving by way of examples. But, th but throughout all the, the areas um, in the country, there are some other things which are being done, which I wouldn't speak about. But to give the House and to give the general public that there is a very concerted attempt to reduce and as far as is humanly practicable, to stamp out this particular um, species of, of um, criminal behavior. Members of the Coast Guard Service are appealing to owners of boats and yachts to dock these vessels in safe areas during the Christmas season. The encouragement comes from Coast Guard officers at the recently held Christmas Crime Prevention Exhibition. Exhibit here is safe, not only safety at sea, but safety for yachties, 
in terms of when they come into our country, how they can protect themselves and also their assets from being breaking it into. What we normally advise yachts when they come to St. Vincent, look for a safe area to anchor their vessels and secure their vessels whenever they are going ashore. Normally what we also try to teach also for seagulls when they go to beaches on picnics on make sure when they're there they are safe also their families are safe make sure they do not consume large amount of alcohol and attempt to go and swim because you know sometimes when you drink alcohol and you're out as it clouds your judgment and you put yourself in harm's way um just continue to do what we ask um, anchoring lighted areas, make sure um, secure your vessels properly, walk with the keys, do what you have to do, but in case of any um, incidents that you want to report, you could contact either the normal police stations, um, the Coast Guard at 457-4578, Kenwan Subbase at 482-4578, or you can even um, contact us via radio at on channel 16 or AJF at 212 decimal 1820. Diabetes continues to be a worrying issue for health officials here. In a question to Minister of Health and Wellness and the Environment, Sinclair Prince in Parliament today, opposition leader Dr. Godwin Friday pointed out that a visit to the surgical ward at the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital reveals an alarming and sad picture of how many persons with limbs amputated of because of diabetes and often unable to obtain medicines that will assist in healing. Dr. Friday asked the health minister what measures are being taken to address the high levels of amputation in diabetic cases and to ensure treatment and medicines are available to avoid or reduce amputation and to aid in the recovery of amputees. In his response, Minister Prince says they have been paying increased attention to the source uh, uh, to the scourge of non-communicable diseases in SVG, especially diabetes. He says he agrees that the prevalence of diabetes in SVG in 2021 and even years before that is very high. Diabetes mellitus and other nutritional and endocrine diseases account for 4.24 percent of the admissions to hospital and 2,681 discharge days in 2021, compared to 1,328 for cerebr cerebrovascular disease and 431 for ischemic heart disease. 5.8 percent of deaths in SVG in 2020 and 6.9% in 2021 were due to diabetes compared with 8.6% in 2019 and a high of 9.3% in 2016. Last year, cancers accounted for the most deaths, 19.4%, while COVID-19 caused 8.6%. I'm just giving you some comparisons. In 2020, a total of 52 amputations Owing to diabetes were done by hospital services with 27 in males with the age of age group 36 to 79 years and 25 among females ages 44 to 88 years. The number of amputations has been reducing on average as indicated by the fact that in 2015 there were 101 diabetes related amputations, 63 in 2016, 77 in 2017, 63 in 2018, and 67 in 2019. The Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment, recognizing the devastating impact of an amputation on an individual and their families, has worked throughout the years to develop a multi-pronged approach aimed at reducing the incidence of diabetes and other non-communicable diseases, and importantly, the complications including amputations. Prevention includes strong health promotion programs, including health education and the empowerment of behavior change. And we'll be putting some emphasis on this, Madam Speaker, that if you prevent it, you don't have a problem at the hospital. 
Cochrane says the preventative measures include the recent launch of Vinci Moves and promoting healthy eating habits, including the development of the National Food-Based Dietary Guidelines and enhancement of the school feeding program by the training of school cooks using the new and healthy menus, among other initiatives. We have strengthened our human resources to deal with diabetes and its complications by securing the services of an endocrinologist, a physician specialized in the care of diabetes. We created a team of foot health practitioners who support patients in the care of their feet in at reducing the development of foot ulcers, which can lead to amputations. We continue to provide highly subsidized insulin and oral diabetic medications required to treat diabetes. We have maintained an adequate supply despite the increased supply chain challenges due to the COVID-19 and the military, the military actions in the Ukraine, and you know what happens with that. We introduced the Cuban drug, Herbaprot P, used to promote the healing of diabetic leg ulcers with good results, reducing the number of amputations. Herbaprot P has since been replaced with similar drugs with good results. We have vascular surgeons on staff who manage patients with lower limb ulcers to reduce the progression to amputations. Madam Speaker, the Ministry has always supported the rehabilitation of these persons who have amputations and by the provision of psychosocial services and physiotherapy. We have recently significantly increased our capacity to provide prosthesis by partnering with the Mackey Memorial Hospital out of Taiwan. However, Madam Speaker, we are hoping that people continue to understand that health is a shared responsibility. We can do all of these and if people continue to ignore um, the fact that this is a, 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 a it's a disease which is creating problems for people, their lives and livelihoods, we're going to reach nowhere. 2023, I've said before, is going to be a year when we will pay greater attention to NCDC and St. Vincent and the Grandins. Today was a family day and health fair at Her Majesty's prisons in Kingston, which formed part of the Prisons Week 2022. Inmates at Her Majesty's prisons Kingston were happy to meet and chat with loved ones after two years of not being able to do so due to COVID-19. We hear more in this report. It was an emotional time for many family members who were able to hug and chat in an open space for at least half an hour with a family member who is an inmate at Her Majesty's Prisons in Kingstown. The meetings were supervised by prison officers. On a daily basis, where they do the visit is just a, a glass, the glass part them off. So they love one outside and they are inside. So where, where in they're doing it today is they could hug, they could touch, and they could say a little bit more what they want to say because when you do it on a daily basis, different than today, um, we are, we're listening. So therefore, the conversation won't be like how they want it. SPO Kevin Alexander says there was a high turnout of family members compared to previous years. People, some people may think that when you're behind the bar and the walls, that no one loves you. But when you come, when you pass and come to see, you will see who loves who. <laughs> they always come to visit their loved one. Because we know that no matter what you do in life, there's somebody who still loves you. So we, we ensure that because we don't want them to feel left out. And, you know, at this time, the festive season, Christmas, is when everybody loves to be home. So even if you overseas, come home. So therefore, if they be behind bars, let me give them the opportunity for the, who are here to come and visit them. Let One prison inmate who has been behind bars for six years says he looks forward to the annual family day, which was put on pause for the past two years. Well, I have been here close to six years on remand, still awaiting trial. And it's my hope that in the next exercises that I will get further word where that is concerned. Uh, it's always nice to be with family and friends you know, for the past two years because of the COVID. We were not privileged to have this opportunity and where we have it, it's always a good thing. Because some people only get to see their, their family once a year, some see them on a regular basis. There are 146 prisoners at Her Majesty's prisons in Kingstown. And at today's family day, many of the family members were mothers. It's about nine years. nine years. You know, at the beginning, it was kind of stressful, you know, and, you know, not feeling happy about it because you're accustomed to having him with us for the, for the holiday season. 
But as time goes by, we promote it and, you know, it's much comfortable now. And most of all, it is more important that we can see him, you know, sit with him during the Christmas season. There were some who had no visitors today. A similar family and health day was held at the Belle Isle Correctional Facility yesterday. This week is being observed as Prisons Week. An exhibition will be held on Friday, December 16th, where prison inmates will showcase their craft. On Sunday will be the prison's concert under the theme, Explosion After Eruption. Larissa Pogsley-Kid, SVGTV News. Hypertension and diabetes have reportedly been prevalent in the prisons and as such authorities are working to have it addressed. Today, all inmates as well as prison officers had a free health care check done as part of the health fair organized for Prisons Week. Senior Prison Officer Kevin Alexander says two years ago, it was found that close to 100% of inmates were on borderline for hypertension and diabetes, hence the need to have regular health checks. Last 2019, when the health fair people them do them stuff and check up and so, they have 98% of prison officers and prisoners at the borderline to diabetes and hypertension. So we just got for that because you know most people don't like to go to the doctor. And if I bring them here, if I bring the doctor here, they might find it easier to go as well than to come and see the Wasi doctor tomorrow. Right? Because doctor right on the compound. So you notice the amount of people you see go to them. You know, it's easier for us. SOP Alexander says they plan to have a quarterly health fair in order to have regular health checks done. He added that they do comply with the recommendations made by medical personnel to promote healthy lifestyles within the prisons. When the, the nurses and the doctors then put forward their proposal to us, we ha have to walk along with it, obey it. If they say exercise, if they say cut down on this type of beverages or this type of food and stuff like that, that we have to do. We have to do that because at the end of the day, it will be our problem and our pressure to have too much diabetic people to deal with, so much hypertensive people to deal with and stuff like that. So we have to adhere to what they say. So we, we work in, con in conjunction with them to deal with whatever problem we are facing. Other than diabetes and high blood pressure testing, cholesterol tests were also done. The women were also educated on self-breast examination. HIV testing at Her Majesty's Prison also formed part of the health fair. Winfield Tannis Abbott of the National AIDS Secretariat and nurses from Beckley assisted in carrying out these tests. One, it is males and females, and we know that you, we, sexual intercourse and so cannot happen with, behind these walls, but who knows what may happen. So we always believe that you may not get it from in here, but you might have come in not having a test done. So we are giving you the opportunity, if you, would have, if you felt that you were at risk out there and you would have had sex without a condom, or you would have had sex and a condom burst, we want to give you that opportunity to know um, what your status is. And in other news now, as the Salvation Army distributes over 700 food hampers to vulnerable persons across St. Vincent and the Grenadines today, Governor General Her Excellency Dame Susan Duggan added over a small token to the organization to provide assistance to help more persons in need. Reflecting on the contributions that the Salvation Army has made to the vulnerable in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Governor General said the organization continues to do remarkable work. For all of us, not only you and not only a few outside, but for many, many persons in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And I'll tell you why. When I was a student going to the girls' high school, many of my friends received meals from the Salvation Army. And many persons received assistance with clothing and other paraphernalia from the Salvation Army. And they are always here for you. So we have to thank them for the good work 
we are doing and encourage them to continue to lift you up and to bring God's word to you to make us all better persons. Her Excellency reminded the recipients of the food hampers of the true meaning of Christmas. Remember also the Christmas story. It's about humility. It's about love. It's about our Savior who was born not in a, a bed, but on straw in a manger where the animals actually were placed. And so you see that our Savior started from a humble beginning and he is the Savior of the world and he will bring good to all of us because he has made the ultimate sacrifice on the cross for all of us. Head of the local Salvation Army, Captain Wilkins, said that he is grateful for the support of the Vincentian people. Let me take opportunity right now to tell you we are so grateful for all your support uh, for the Salvation Army in St. Vincent and Grenadine. May the Lord bless St. Vincent and Grenadine. May the Lord bless the Salvation Army in St. Vincent and Grenadine. May the Lord bless the Salvation Army all over the world. God bless you all. We love you. Meanwhile, speaking to SVG TV News, some of the recipients of the food hampers thank the Salvation Army for the assistance. Good man. Good night. Very good. And I just collect one for somebody who cannot move, so it is good. Very good. Thank you all very much. God bless. I am very happy for those, these things here. But there are a lot of people making too much noise and they need to humble themselves. I thank God for sparing my life this year, not a new year. I feel good. Very, very good. Good, good, very good. I thank, I thank you very much for it because I, if I could buy it and play plenty money for it, I am poor lady. They're good, I'm very, I'm very thankful. Very thanks, and they're doing something real, absolutely. Because there's some people right now, they don't have it. And they come and they get their share. And I like how this salvation army, they soft, nice, and for the people them. Because we're not being going to make this money for drinks. This praise God, the salvation army help. This is a very, very nice help this morning. Okay, and everybody should be in the quiet and thank God for the help and his chain to wake up with this morning to get the breakfast and the salvation army. Because this thing very important to us and the milk is a very nice thing for your body. <laughs> We're going to drink a cup right now. <laughs>